All right, we're back with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. Yesterday opened the week-long filing period for city folk to look to get into elected office for citywide and aldermanic seats. And to talk more about this is somebody who can't file for his seat, Ward 7 Alderman Joe McMiniman with us on WMAY. Alderman, thanks for taking time with us this morning. How are you doing? Outstanding, Greg, and uh, thank God I can't run again. I'm so eager to get into some private and personal projects and <laughs> hobbies and catch up, uh, you know, work around the house and uh, family visits and all kinds of activities. So, so um, what, what what does the future hold for you then? Uh, other than, you know, looking at the personal stuff, is there is there going to be a future in politics? I don't. Well, I'd like to advise every once in a while because I think, you know, you learn a lot when you've been sitting in the seat for 12 years, uh, you know, almost 600 meetings so wow. I'll be you know available to help um, but n- not as a elected person by any means so let's get to this because I, I appreciate your analysis you, you are very thoughtful in uh, your understanding of city politics and while we've of course got uh, nonpartisan races in in city politics uh, it's it's hard to not see that there are indeed politics at play um, but um, from your general assessment um, have things gotten better in the past 12 years that you've been in office uh, as a uh, Ward 7 Alder person uh, when it comes to dealing with different administrations during your tenure there, uh, when it comes to communication, uh, when it comes to just getting city business done. Have things improved? I think the city as a as a community uh, has, imp- has improved. I think you, you see the infrastructure out there that has vastly improved. Uh, roads are better. They're not as as uh, good as we'd like them to be, but they're much better. Uh, we've got significant prog- uh, projects in the works, whether it be uh, you know railroad relocation or uh, you know, MacArthur Boulevard, IDOT. Uh, we've got uh, downtown. We've got the uh, armory to do, and you mentioned some of the other projects earlier this morning uh, downtown in the government part of downtown. The the commercial retail, what used to be retail part of downtown, it's it's taken a severe hit due to COVID. And it's going to take uh, several years to get back to where it was. It had momentum before COVID, and it's going to have to regain some of that uh, momentum. But there's a lot uh, of good things going on. The medical district is just, you know, booming. You see new construction there all the time. Uh, Our utility is in much better shape than it was 12 years ago, vastly better shape. We've got now a safeguard uh, set-aside environmental fund that did not exist 12 years ago, or, or eight years ago in particular. Of over $20 million. So there's a lot of good things happening. At the city council level, I think the mayor needs more support from the older persons. We're going into a political season. Uh, Many of the aldermen have kind of, they want to see a different candidate get in the seat. My personal view is that uh, the mayor, our current mayor, Jim Langfeller, has has earned a third term. I think uh, overall he's done very, very well. He's patient. He avoids, um, you know, pitch battle fights with the alderman. He, uh, he, he takes hits, but he doesn't really um, burn bridges. That's what impresses me the most with Jim Langfield. He does not burn bridges. I think he keeps his eye on the ball. He's got um, a good personal staff there, meaning that his sister, Julia, she's done an outstanding job in communications. He's got the best city attorney we could have. Now, when you're a good city attorney, it means more work comes to you. So uh, Jim, Jim uh, Zirkel's desk fills up with uh, all kinds of um, extra duties, extra work. Besides the 40 ordinances, he's got an overview each month. He, just a ton of um, various uh, concerns among the various departments of our city government. He's done an outstanding job, but he's getting close to 70 like I am. And so um, the mayor's got a difficult decision there to make. Well, it's not the mayor's alone. It's Jim Zirkel. Is he going to hang on for the next term? But the mayor's got some good, steady hands that help him guide the the ship of state um he's overall he's had good tenure in some of the city departments like uh city budget mccarty's been there now 12 continuous years eight years for the mayor he's had good tenure. Well, and he was from the the previous administration too he, he worked for uh mike houston that's right he's got he's he's worked for two mayors so that's geez i i didn't have notes but you just got me talking greg so i don't know where you want to go but <laughs> i would like to talk about the Wyndham. i think that's one huge project where i really admire the mayor. He tried to. He's trying to achieve three goals with the Wyndham Hotel: the 30-story 
you know, massive Hulk downtown that we don't want to turn into a Hulk. We want it to be active, vibrant, and we want to put new money into it. And so the mayor was trying to get accomplish three goals when he brought the Wyndham vote to the city council three times. He didn't give up. He doesn't give up. He keeps he keeps trying. And so what he wanted to do there with the Wyndham was put $30 million of upgrades into the Wyndham, help to repopulate downtown uh, with uh, apartments, but also save some of the hotel rooms for the convention center. He was trying to go do all three. Some of our older persons, and uh, I'll have to name names, Mike Coffey, he, I think they were singularly focused on hotel rooms. And so I think the, bro- the mayor had a broader outlook on that. I don't know where that's going to land right now. Um, we, we had a new um, potential buyer out of New York, New York, his pockets were full of investor money, and to turn that down, to, to walk away from that was inexcusable. The mayor kept trying to compromise, compromise. His final compromise never got to the floor because an appointed um, alder woman um, flipped on the mayor at the last minute, um, and I don't, don't think uh, we were able to plan for that. But besides that, the mayor had the votes. And, uh, and uh, so getting back to city elections, you know, we've got seven incumbents. Two of which were appointed, so uh, and we've got three open seats: mine, Ward Seven, and Ward Six, Desenso, and uh, Ward Four, Fulgenzi. That's where the action will be: open seats. That's where you see the action, um, and then you'll see maybe some action with the two appointed seats. That'd be Roy Williams and Greg, and uh, Sean Gregory. And then you've got the open seat for city treasurer. You'll see some a lot of activity there. And then you've got uh, you know a major race for for mayor. But I think um, the mayor's done an acceptable job, sometimes even commendable job. And so I I think it's hard to change a uh, you know in, to change horses in midstream. I think that's uh, not always the best way to go. You're hearing analysis from Ward Seven Alderman Joe McMiniman. He is term limited out, so he cannot file for his seat. But uh, hearing his analysis of uh, how the the city has uh, moved forward in the past 12 years, uh, but also some of the, uh, the 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 politics that are going to be at play uh, as we look at who's going to be the the next alder people for the various wards. Uh, Alderman, we got to take a break, but I do want to come back and, and talk a little bit more about uh, the citywide races, uh, the automatic seats, but also some of the major issues moving forward uh, that the city of Springfield has to deal with. You mentioned the Wyndham City Center, uh, but there's some of the legacy things that are still around, like something you uh, raised the alarm about and really yeah. educated me when I started watching the city council uh, 12 years ago, uh, and that was city police and fire pensions and just how upside down they are. Right. Uh, have we made any progress on that? So we'll talk about that coming up as well here with uh, Alderman Joe McBenman on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, and uh, that's coming up next, but we got to take a look at... Back with Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY. I'm Greg Bishop, and we're talking with Springfield Alderman Joe McMiniman about uh, the filing period opening up for city offices. Uh, every seat's up for grabs on the uh, horseshoe, as are uh, city-wide offices. Uh, you talked a bit about uh, who's seeking mayor, Alderman. Um, but uh, what about, uh, you know, is there going to be any challenge to uh, Frank Lesko for clerk? Or uh, how do you see the race for city treasurer uh, playing out? Yeah, I don't uh, see anyone. I haven't heard of anyone going um, into the clerk's race. Uh, Frank Lesko's done an outstanding job from my point of view. He's always responsive. He gets just the job done, and uh, that's what you want. He's kind of, you know, silent behind the scenes uh, a clerk that gets the, the job done. On city treasurer, of course, you got um, an active um, competition. You got Redpath's daughter, and you've got Lisa Badger, who's an elected uh, park board person now. So that'll be an interesting race to follow. With the uh, city aldermatic seats, uh, of course, you see some that aren't seeking uh, re-election, like uh, Alderwoman DeCenso. Uh, that, that shapes up Ward 6 to be an interesting uh, race. Uh, your seat, have you uh, made a determination if you're going to support somebody for Ward 7? Well, there, you know, Brad Carlson has uh, a huge advantage. He ran four years ago, so he's kind of knows the territory. He's um, He's been a, a Republican... Um, he's held all kinds of what you call, um, um, you know, jobs that you stay loyal to the party with. And, and so he's got, you know, last time I ran four years ago, he had, you know, Irv Smith writing letters for him, former uh, Republican county chair. You had, he had Karen Hassera writing letters for him. He's got um, a lot of 
a win behind his back. So he'll be, and traditionally, Ward uh, 7, my ward, was a Republican ward, meaning it was always a GOP type person who got it. And now I broke that pattern after 20 years of that way. I, I would prefer a more independent older person there, uh, but I don't, I, th- th- no other candidate is, I know of one, a person who has c- been collecting signatures in Ward 7, but I don't know if that person um, is ready to file yet or not. In Ward 6, I think you do have active uh, competition there, um, and it, that should be a, you've got Notoriano who ran for treasurer four years ago, and then you've got a, a young attorney by the name of Alyssa Hacker who's in the race, and but then you've also got Dan Pittman, who I think um, brings a lot of strength to, to the race. Um, he is a, um, a former Marine. He's an electrician by trade. He's now in the state government. He's got a family. He coaches um, both track and uh, bas- girls basketball. He brings a lot to that race. And he's, our, he's a late entry. Why? Because he ran for county treasurer, and then he just made a quick decision. Well, uh, he believes he wants to serve. So he's collecting uh, signatures this week still. So I think he'll file in time and then uh, so we'll have a really I think that might be the most active competitive race um, in in the uh, in the in the city although I, there's someone circulating in Lakeisha Purchase's ward too and I think that person if that person that person started the exercise this weekend if that person gets the signatures that could be an interesting race too um, so that there, there you go Greg Ward 7 Alderman Joe McMiniman with us um, so let's talk about some of the issues and uh, one of the things that you really raised the alarm about years ago uh, was the the number of um, outstanding unfunded pension obligations for the city's uh, fire and police funds. Uh, has that improved? Have we gotten worse, or is it just st- status quo? It's over the course of twelve years, it it got worse. The total amount of debt grew from roughly two hundred and fifty million dollars for police and fire pension funds to four hundred and fifty million. And we don't have the most recent reports that will take into consideration, you know, the cratering of the uh, Nasdaq and S and P five hundred and Dow Jones Industrials. All the investment um, portfolios are significantly down this year. And so that means that the debt of our police and fire uh, pension funds will have increased. But we don't have the most recent reports to reflect upon that. Um, Now, in the course of the last three years, we had some reform efforts by Governor Pritzker, which moved all the investment funds to a consolidated pool at the state level. In the long run, that will help um, particularly the smaller investment funds, not so much uh, Springfields. We've got more on the large side of police and fire pension funds. Right now, we're kind of, Greg, um, how we service police and fire pension funds is from city overall budget. And so right now, our overall budget is flush, so we don't feel the pain of having to put so much into the police and fire pension funds. We've got the highest cash balance we've ever had in the city's history right now, which is why, how? Because we got um, a lot of help from the federal government and and during covid and then also right now and we haven't really mentioned i don't hear this being discussed but what inflation does inflate not only is your price of bread going up the price of milk and the price of gasoline but when you're at the hardware store and you're buying things with at inflating prices that particularly helps uh, sales tax revenue sure. so sales tax revenue has done very well during this inflationary period but meanwhile, our costs have been locked in place, meaning the cost of, state, of city government is um, labor. And um, getting back to Jim Zirkel and, and our mayor, they've done a very good job of cost containment when it comes to negotiating union contracts. So if our union contracts are currently locked in, let's say an average of 2.5% of growth each year, but our inflation means uh, for sales tax, when people are out there in the, in the economy and they're buying things, our, our sales tax revenue might be at 5% growth, 6% growth. So you've got a reverse imbalance of what we used to have. We've got good revenue. Revenue, but um, good cost containment uh, for spending, but that's going to reverse itself. In, in, uh, you know, three, four years from now, um, the uh, unions will properly contract, uh, like the school district just did. They'll try to help their employees um, catch up with inflation, and then. But meanwhile, inflation will cool down, so revenues will be down, but costs will be up. So. That's kind of that we're in a transition right now, Greg. The problem is still there. It's lurking, and it will resurrect itself, um, I think, big time in about two or three years. 
Springfield Alderman, uh, Joe McMiniman, uh, that's all the time we've got. Uh, we'll definitely have to carve out another segment because two segments is not enough with you. Um, we could also talk about uh, in the future uh, the the influence of labor unions as something else that you've uh, raised multiple times at the Horseshoe and uh, drew some ire from other members of the city council. So I think that that's something else we could talk about Greg, in the there's future. no one else that's been around longer than, than me, that, than you perhaps, because you've been here at the wheel for 12 years and Pretty so wild. we we know the history of things and it's yeah. great to be here and i'll come back as often as you want me to thumbs up talk. greatly Thanks appreciate lot, that absolutely springfield alderman joe mcminiman here with springfield's morning news on 92.7 wmay springfield's news and talk it's eight o'clock from the fly spi studios take